we are about to make a very important point here, which summarizes the reasoning that is used in most statistical analysis, parameters, estimators, and statistical inference. So far, the difference between the probability model and the experiment or the real data have been emphasized. A model is proposed, then the data is assumed to behave according to the model. However, it has not been emphasized that indirectly, not only we have been assuming that the data follows a probability distribution, but also its moments. And by moments here, I mean parameters like the expected value and the variance. For instance, we assume that the outcome of rolling a die follow this model here. The possible outcomes are 1 to 6, and the probabilities are 1 over 6 each. Indirectly, we are also assume that the expected value is 3.5, because the expected value is implied by the model. It is the sum of every possible outcome multiplied by their respective probability. That's the definition of expected value. Also, indirectly, we also assumed that the variance is 2.91667 because the variance, which is the summation of each outcome minus the mean square times the respective probability, is also implied in the model. However, for many contexts, it's used to assume that an experiment follows a probability model, but let the data or the experiments tell us which moments we should assume. Now, this is more flexible than we have been doing above. Before, we are assuming not only a probability model, but the implied moments. Now, we are going to assume the real data follows a probability model, but we are going to assume that the moments are unknown. For instance, consider that we want to model the distribution of human heights. The data analysis will be conducted in the following steps. Given the event being studied, a type of probability distribution is chosen, and it is assumed that the event follows that distribution. If we are talking about human height, it is useful to assume that the human mind follows a normal distribution with expected value mi and standard deviation sigma unknown. Is this true? No. The distribution of human heights do not follow a normal distribution. To see that, note the following. In a normal distribution, the range of the random variable is from minus infinity to plus infinity. Therefore, according to the normal distribution, the probability of someone having a negative height is positive, even though it's very small. Also, the probability of someone being 20 feet tall is also positive. 100 feet tall is also positive as well, although the probability is very small. So, we assume or we pretend that the real distribution is normal, but we know it is not. The distribution of height depends on many things, genetics, nutrition, I have no idea what the determinants are. But it is useful to assume that the distribution of human height is normal, and we do so. Again, the probabilities of negative heights or really large heights are positive, but it's so small that in practice doesn't make a difference. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to assume that the true quote-unquote distribution of human heights is normally distributed. However, we are not going to be as strict as when you were modeling the experiment of rolling a die because we're going to assume that we do not know expected value and standard deviation. So that's step one. Assume we know the type of the distribution, but we don't know the moments. Step two. 
data collection. The data the investigator works with are called a sample. It can be the result of a repeated experiment, such as rolling a die many times, or it can be a sample draw from the whole population. In our illustration, we could collect the sample of heights of the students in this class. Let's pretend there are five students and their heights are 70, 74, 65, 81, 54. Step three, use the data to calculate the estimators, such as the sample mean and the sample variance. In our example, let's use R to calculate the mean and the variance. I'm defining X as our hypothetical sample of human heights in the class. So here I'm defining my vector then I take the mean and I take the variance. Okay, 68.8, 102.7. Note that the comments above correspond to the sample mean and sample variance, meaning the estimators, not to the expected value and populational variance, which are the parameters. And then finally, we use the estimators to estimate, that is, to make an educated guess about the parameters. In the case of a normal distribution, the population parameters can be estimated directly from their sample counterparts. That is, we're going to estimate that, or make an educated guess that, the parameter expected value is 68.8 and the parameter variance is 102.7. This process of using data analysis to estimate the underlying parameters of a probability distribution is called statistical inference. This type of estimation is often the main purpose of empirical studies. It would be our main purpose when studying econometrics as well. Two notes here are important. First, implicitly, we are assuming that if we are possible to measure everybody's height on the planet, we will know mean and sigma, the population parameters, which is why they are called population parameters. However, remember, this is not true. We assume it is, but we know it's not, because the real distribution of human heights, for instance, cannot take negative values. However, looking at very large samples, experience show that this distribution is really, really close to normal. So we can go ahead pretending as we've done in step one. Second, for our purposes here, it is essential to assume that each observation, height in the example, is identically independently distributed. Loosely speaking, that means that each observation follows or is drawn from the same distribution and the fact that one observation is draw does not affect the probability of drawing another observation and vice versa. For instance, we cannot have a sample where everybody is from the same family. Why? Because their heights wouldn't be independent. The height of fathers, for instance, is correlated to the height of sons. But we're going to study this concept more formally later. Just remember that throughout these notes, our observations are identically and independently distributed for now.